might not ever even reach the land. Nah, I guess we will someday. <laughs> One Piece is that kind of series where two people could get stranded at sea and it'll be okay. Like as Luffy gets trapped in the mouth of a giant bird, Zoro just confidently starts rowing after him. He picks up and beats a bunch of stranded pirates who tell him they've been stranded because of a girl. And that's where Nami is introduced as like a very smart, not pirate hunter, but I guess a pirate robber. The fact that you can trick someone into swapping boats and then quickly steal theirs is great and then plan for that boat to be destroyed so they get stranded at sea? That's like, she's an evil mastermind. Those pirates were a part of uh, Buggy the Clown's crew, a, a ship full of clown pirates. <laughs> clown pirates. Those pirates were chasing Nami, and when Luffy fell out of the mouth of a bird, she's like, ah, you can take care of him. So Nami is maybe not that good of a person, and she just lets Luffy fight and, and possibly die against pirates. Then we get to see Buggy the Clown, which is uh, the captain of this clown pirate crew. And again, another bad pirate captain. Like two out of three, a lot of these pirates are going to be pretty bad to their own crew. And Buggy just straight up kills his crewmate. Like, wow. I, I, I okay, okay, wow. There is such absurd dialogue between Luffy and Nami. It's like purposefully picking all the bad dialogue options in a video game. Hey, I know you rob pirates, but how about you team up with me, a pirate? So Nami lies to Luffy and traps him by pretending to befriend Captain Buggy. Buggy's the type of pirate who doesn't just steal from villages, but utterly just decimates them in the process. And with that same cannonball that can just destroy an entire village, Buggy wants to shoot Luffy with it. So I don't know, maybe earlier on when I thought she would have left Luffy to die, maybe she would have came back and helped if he was losing. Some other pirate ends up lighting a fuse and then Nami tries to stop it. And Luffy is just panicking because a giant cannonball is about to go his way. And Nami just puts out the fuse with her own two hands, saving a pirate's life. And that is when Zoro shows up. And you know, I didn't think about this, but I love the fact that everyone immediately is like, oh yeah, I know Zoro, you know, that infamous pirate hunter, because of course they would know him. And Zoro, we're supposed to believe, just kills Buggy in one shot, but Buggy has the chop chop fruit, which makes him split up into smaller pieces. And that's a really neat ability. It shows that people who ate fruits can be pirates, something that we actually didn't know or see before since they can't swim. And two, fruits introduce really unique abilities. The ability to stretch or split yourself into multiple parts. Like, I'm already thinking about what other types of fruits there can be. Zoro gets cut in a fight and then tries to run away by carrying Luffy. Nami mentions that no pirate would rescue their crew because up to this point, we're like, what, two for four? Like, Shanks and Luffy are the only characters who we've seen not just care about their crew, but also about other people. I like that treasure is viewed as very different things, like Luffy's hat is their treasure. Later, the mayor says that their entire town that they've built up over the years is their treasure. This dog whose owner died and has lost everything except for their owner's shop. That's their treasure. Again, creating the idea that treasure isn't just currency or jewels or gold, it can be a hat or a building or a town or a concept as long as it has value to you. And it does make me wonder if Roger's treasure is, is something like that. Like if it's gold or if it's more nuanced than just like material goods. Not, not, not saying that I want it to be like the real treasure was the friends we made along the way, you know, but something just besides your, your traditional chest full of gold. We also get to see a lot of fighting this arc. We get some sprinkles of Nami fighting and being like a tricky thief. We get Chow Chow versus Maji, the, the lion tamer, which has their own mini story in this bigger arc. We also get Captain versus Captain. We got Luffy versus Buggy the Clown. We get Zoro versus Kabaji, the, the unicycle pirate, who is uh, relatively cheap. They are fighting cheap. And Zoro even handicapped themselves uh, further just as a flex, as a like, I'm strong enough to take you even with a stab wound. It's such a power move. Luffy didn't seem to care that Zoro was injured. Like, this is their fight, and Zoro knows what they're doing in a 1v1. But as soon as Buggy tries to interfere, he stops it, and then, like, takes him down. 
so yeah, right now I think in this entire saga we appear to be getting the crew together. We got like a first command and maybe a second in command. I'm not sure we got strong definitions as to who's doing what role right now because it's pretty small. But I don't know. Right now I think we're just building to get that entire crew. I don't know if it'll be that easy to get the entire crew. I want to say these two arcs have been relatively easy, but is Nami really a part of the crew? Is she trustworthy? Like, is she good? In fact, Luffy seems to be more of a good guy than she does, right? Like, Luffy steals currency from Buggy and then gives it to the town, but I don't think that's something that uh, Nami would have done. But I think that maybe that's what will change her mind. Like, throughout this whole arc and a bit of the last, we've seen what makes a bad pirate captain and a bad pirate crew in contrast with this one. And while Nami doesn't appear to be fully on their side yet, I think maybe they'll turn around on it. And I don't know, what else can I say? I'm really excited to read the next arc. So I don't know, feel free to read it and then we'll talk about it arc by arc. You know, that'd be fun. Uh, something, 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 something. Subscribe. <laughs>